Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we haven't done this in a while. We're going to go over some horse racing plays for today, um, September 23rd. Just for those of you that haven't um, seen these before, again, for those of you who don't know me and you know where I came from originally, I mean, this is probably where you'd end up getting the most EV, um, uh, kind of following what I do. Um, this is not not to get too into it, but I've been doing pick six syndicates and horse race gambling for just like so long, and this is clearly where between after poke forget poker and backgammon and all the other stuff that i can do in dfs I mean, this is really where you get the most ev listening to what i'm saying um unfortunately there's just you know it's not a big industry now so i really don't don't play all that much um i still do the pick sixes from time to time and what i decided for true dfs uh subscribers uh, for people that are watching um if i come up with some some good plays um, i'll just make a quick video and let you know who they are um, the, the, the point is, is that you know, most of the time, most of the time when I release this stuff, the people that are going to be betting it are not going to really be moving my price, even if I do end up betting it. So I'm really not worried about it too much. Um, and I'm not going to get too into the details of how I come up with this stuff. It's literally just, if you're in the mood to degen and you want to get some action, you want to play horse racing, well, I'm not promising you these are going to win, obviously, but I do promise that all these are going to be good EV. Um, and certainly going to be better off doing what I'm telling you than doing it on your own. And again, if you just, you don't want to be action and wanted to take a shot and play horse racing, it's, you're definitely going to get good EV, uh, a good EV situation. Uh, horse racing is a lot of variance, So it might take quite a while for you to actually realize the profit. But for those of you that were following it, um, the times that I have put these up, the EV has pretty much been through the roof, um, which of course means that now it's going to regress and no one's going to win for the next six months, but that's just the way it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this. You know what you guys can do if you want to thank me at all for this? Um, you could try, sign up for True DFS, obviously, where we could, you know, uh, we do a lot of daily fantasy sports. Or if you want, if you want to sign up for um, XB Select, which is where I put in most of my horse betting, um, I think I think the promo code is True DFS, and you get some kind of bonus. I'm not exactly sure what they give you, but it, it's something. Um, nonetheless you can bet on FanDuel you can bet a lot of different places and so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go through uh, what I like at the various tracks I looked at Gulfstream and Churchill and and actually Woodbine uh, specifically the last race and I want to kind of get into it before I forget let's deal with Woodbine um because I'll definitely forget to get to it in the last race of Woodbine which is about 4 50 p.m I really I really like a long shot uh, here, and that would be Summer Shandy at uh, 20 to 1, 21 morning line. I think that he well outperforms his odds here. And if you wanted to put him with other horses, I guess, I mean, my boy Christian's not bad. Quiet Rebel's not terrible. Uh, my Redemption's okay. But the clear value, at least for me, would be Summer Shandy at 20 to 1. I mean, I, I make him probably about 10% to win. So, hey, 90% of the time, you're going to get mad at me. But the fact is, is that over the long run, this horse is going to pay off at this price. So, um, and again, if, if you're there and you're, you're betting the horse, make sure you are getting a decent price, I mean, at least over 10 to 1. Otherwise, I mean, all bets are off, so to speak. All right, let's take a look at uh, Gulfstream. And I see it's already an hour of post time, so I do have to kind of get motoring. So if I can put this up on the site and you guys can take a look and, and act on it if you want to. Uh, the first race, I think the five is a very solid, you know, uh, low priced horse at three to one here. It's not a two morning line. It's already down to, you know, to three to one. But an interesting bomb here is is enough rain, the four. Uh, so I, I would actually recommend something like a five, four exacta um, or maybe even box the five, four or use both of them. Um, I think both of them are pretty, pretty good values for their price here. So the five, what a knockout and the four, enough rain. Uh, race number two, uh, I actually had something for you. Rough enough, the eight, uh, the five horse at eight to one, I thought was really good value. So you could play him on the back end of that double with the five race one, or even with the four race one. And I think rough enough at eight to one is very, very strong. Uh, the other favorites, two, three, four, seven, they're, <laughs> excuse me, they're all fine, but I think the five is, is a clear value in this race. Uh, Third race uh, is definitely a pass. You don't want to bet that. Race number four is definitely a pass as well. You don't want to bet that. 
fifth race, I, I do think the four and the five are pretty good chalk. Uh, it's usually not my speed to bet these things, but if you're just betting anyway and you were wanted to bet the four and the five, I do think that they are are pretty decent, you know, and they're solid, solid short price horses. I, mean, I wouldn't bet them myself, really. But again, they're, they're they are pretty good chalk. Um, race six, the set six is good chalk. So, again, I don't think you really want to be better than that. The seventh race to three, I think, is really strong at nine to two. Um, I don't know where he's actually going to go off at nine to two, but even anything over three to one or seven to two, I think is pretty fair for this one. So I do like the three Onesto. The eighth race at Gulfstream, I think you have two different kind of middlers who are pretty good here. Heiko at six to one, I think is pretty fair. Um, and let's be honest, the four, I think both of them are just as likely. Well, I shouldn't say, that. I mean, the two poem is definitely the most likely winner. But I think relative to the prices, I think that the six is probably the best value, Keiko. Um, and it's pretty good value. And the four would probably be second best value, I suppose. So, I, But I would, I think Keiko is, is pretty fair here at six to one. He'd probably be my top choice. And then in the ninth race, uh, pretty chalky here. I think the eight is fine. And then the two and the five. There's really not a lot of value here. I'd probably end up skipping that place. All right, so we did walk Woodbine, we did Churchill, and now let's deal with, uh, excuse me, we did uh, Gulfstream. Now let's deal with Churchill, which starts at about 12.45. Uh, first race, definitely no value. Second race, definitely no value. The third race, I thought that the the three, the four, and the eight were were solid enough but it, uh, solid enough long shots but the thing is is that you're getting scratches out of oncoming train and jake rocks so all these horses are going to be much shorter so for that reason i'm probably going to recommend passing that race too um fourth race is a 1-800 gambler race you can bet this you should be uh, calling 1-800 gambler pretty much all first time starters and and wild horses just no bet there um Okay, so the fifth race, I do think the four midnight raid is good value at eight to one. Uh, three, six, seven are the favorites, and I think there's nothing wrong with them particularly. So if you do want to play the four on top, you can play them with the three, six, seven. Um, and I definitely think the four is going to be the best value over there. Uh, okay, race six, I like actually. I, the six is okay, Shadow Matter, probably the most likely winner. But I think that the two big values here are, first of all, the one, Carmelito. I think he's probably the best value in the race at 12 to 1. Um, and the seven, Spankhurst, is pretty good value too. But I think Carmelito is, is clearly the best value here in this race. Race number seven, check the odds here. But Willow Bend at 10 to 1 is mispriced. I think that he should probably be about 4 to 1. Um, so anything over six to one, I guess you should probably be betting uh, Willow Bend. And there are a couple of other long shots in here, which I think are worth mentioning. Adelinda at 20 to one and Creative Die at 10 to one. Um, so I would play all of that together. Um, it's a two year old wild race, but they're going to be, you know, quite, uh, I think they're going to be quite long. And I think particularly the 11 is the most likely winner. And for whatever reason, is priced at 10 to one. Eighth race. No bet. Everything's the same. The ninth race, I like the three and the five as, as good values here. The one is, is pretty solid, but I think the three and the five are, are either just as good or close, and they're getting a, getting a big price break on them. So I think that South Bend and five long-range toddy are certainly worth uh, worth doing. Uh, and tenth race is a total wheel. You wouldn't want to bet that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't need to recap. Um, you can just go back. The video is short enough that you can watch the whole thing over again, probably in seven minutes. And if you bet any of these things, great. Uh, we have do have a Discord channel on uh, True DFS where you can tip it's about the horse racing if you want. And which is kind of a neat, neat, a neat little um, uh, warm up because the Breeders' Cup is coming up in the uh, beginning of November. We'll definitely do some full content for that. Um, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.